President Joe Biden has announced that he plans to pull U.S. troops out of Afghanistan by September 11th of this year, clearly noting the, uh, the symbolism here of that, of that day and an end to a war that has raged for 20 years. We have been deployed in Afghanistan. We've had U.S. military in Afghanistan for 20 years. And I remember I was in Afghanistan a decade ago. The situation then was largely the same as the situation now, except there were far more troops in, in the country at that time. But the same things you'd hear uh, about how the Taliban is on the offensive and the central government is corrupt and weak and ineffective and their forces toe to toe without U.S. support won't be able to go uh, won't be able to go up in battle against the Taliban without losing. And. I just remember thinking that everyone that I knew who was handling that issue at the at the highest levels, honestly, of the intelligence community in the U.S. government was uh, very negative on the long term. Pro- that was in 2010. Very negative on the prospects of Afghanistan's future and felt like we could stay and just keep holding it together or eventually realize that enough is enough. Well. The same voices, the very hawkish Republican voices that you always hear on this point are out there telling you, oh, we we shouldn't do it. Here he here he is. The guy I've never seen. Lindsey Graham he's never seen a troop deployment or a war that he didn't like, as far as I can tell. I, I don't know what it is with this guy. Oh, always looking to, to you know bomb another country and show what is wrong. So he gets uh, applause from the think tank set on K Street in D.C. Here he is. Play 11. Joe Biden's become an incredibly destabilizing American president. Uh, He took a border that was uh, pretty calm and turned it into chaos. Uh, The Mideast had been transformed on Trump's watch where the Arabs were working with the Israelis and had Iran in a box. He's taken Iran and let them out of the box. They're talking about enriching uranium at 60 percent now, which is a direct threat to the existence of the state of Israel. Uh, The Russians are challenging him in the Ukraine, and now he is withdrawing forces in Afghanistan against sound military advice. To all of you who are listening, you remember where you're at on September 11th, 2001. Our military told President Biden that if you withdraw all of our forces, al-Qaeda and ISIS will come roaring back. Um, Afghanistan would disintegrate into civil war. And we can avoid all of that by having three to five thousand American forces making sure that ISIS and Al Qaeda never come back to hurt us. He rejected that advice. Afghanistan is going to deteriorate pretty rapidly. Al Qaeda and ISIS are going to come back. He's paving the way for another 9-11. Now, I, I want to be very clear that. I don't care that Joe Biden is a Democrat and I don't care that this may not be the most popular thing to say on conservative talk radio right now. I think the war in Afghanistan needs to end. I wanted Trump to end it. I wanted Trump to end our military presence. He did not. I want Biden to end our military presence. I'm not going to do this thing. I'm not going to play this game of saying I want other men and women downrange fighting, you know, in Afghanistan when it politically suits me. No. You know how I felt during the the Trump years. I wanted I wanted the president to end our military involvement in Afghanistan. I am going to stand on that same viewpoint now. All right. Otherwise, what am I just, you know, and look, I know there's so many conservatives out there is in the media that's just all about. I mean, it's raising donor money and like, you know, MAGA hats when it's popular. And then, you know, oh, they're all of a sudden. You know, they're Hayekian free market pioneers when they think that's popular. And then back to the MAGA hat. They say whatever they've got to say. You all know that I want the war in Afghanistan uh, or involvement, I should say, to end there. So I'm not going to pretend that that's not what I wanted. If I wanted it under Trump last year, I want it under Biden now. So I'm not going to do this thing and hit him for. Yeah. Is the border a mess because of Biden? A hundred percent. Everything else that I've said about that stuff is that that all stays. But I do think the war in Afghanistan are our part in the war in Afghanistan needs to end. And I understand that that is there's a very real possibility the Taliban will end up taking over substantial control there. And I will tell you right now that I will if there is a terrorist attack planned from 
Afghan soil that involves the Afghan regime, the Taliban, whatever part it may be, uh, I, I will advocate for a, a not a U.S. military, you know, pinprick invasion, uh, but scorched earth and whatever we got to do, however we got to do it. Not not letting them take another generation of Americans, you know, 20 years worth of people who are serving the in the military and wound them and kill them. And we're trying to <clears throat> create democracy. No, no, no. If they if they if they poke the dragon again, we go back breathing whatever fire we have to. That should be our attitude. It's the way it used to be. So that's the old approach in America. When we when someone decides that they're going to attack us, we go back, we hit them with everything we've got until they can't hit us anymore. And that's that. So that really should be the attitude, I think. Uh, It's not that we're going to go rebuild other people's countries for them. And that has been the case for for a while now. Now, I understand people say it's a relatively small military presence. Yeah, but maybe in three years it won't be relatively small. Maybe the Taliban becomes ascendant and our 3,000 troops there is not enough. And now now we're going to get deeper and deeper into it. You know, there is the the quagmire theory of how these things work. It's it's not it's not a lie. This can happen. Marco Rubio, another we've got all these Republican foreign policy hawks, you know, making sure that the Raytheon stock stays where it is uh, and keeps going up. Here's Marco Rubio. Play 12. Well, that was a decision that began under President Trump. And um, so they've just what they've announced is that they're going to stick with President Trump's decision uh, with regards to Afghanistan. Look. The outcome is going to be a terrible thing. The Taliban, I believe, will eventually take over the country as they were in charge before, and it's not going to be a good outcome. The flip side of it is that I'm not sure what the pathway to a better future in the near term was. And, um, you know, given all the other needs we're facing around the world, you know, once President Trump made that decision, I think the die was cast in that regard. Do you think the U.S. has made enough progress on training the Afghan security force? I mean, I hope so. I don't have a tremendous amount of uh, I hope I'm wrong because of the implications, but I don't have a lot of faith that the current government in Afghanistan will be able to survive or hold on for long. Uh, the, the, the Taliban, uh, my, my personal opinion, everything I, mean, I know is that I think the Taliban will have an Afghan, Afghanistan controlled by the Taliban um, again. And that not a good outcome, but it's the direction that we're headed. And the previous administration agreed to that. The current administration stuck with it, and that's where we're going. I think that's where we should go. And I'll have to revisit this, you know, maybe in a, a year, maybe in 18 months, because I think what Marco Rubio says here, he, he understands the basic facts and storyline of this. The guy's in the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. I mean, he, he's he's pretty uh, he's pretty knowledgeable about this stuff. Uh, yeah, the Taliban will be ascendant and there is a chance the Taliban will take over much, not all, but much of the country. And perhaps they will then forge some kind of a power sharing agreement. But it's not my problem. You know, we, we've we've gone through this, right? We remember Iraq. We tried to build a better country and then they want, you know, now they want us out. And and uh, then we had ISIS and all this stuff. And we're all told, oh, we're imperialists in America. No, we, we've done this. We tried to go in and get rid of the bad dictators and uh, get rid of the jihadists and build nice societies. Nope. Enough. I'm not. I don't want anyone being sent on our behalf as the American people to go do this anymore. You know, what we really need to be concerned about is if things get really hot with China in the next five to 10 years, are we ready for that? All right. Afghanistan is done. Well, we, we've been through this. We've done everything that we can do. We'll, we'll still give them aid. And, you know, the thing is, you got to remember, there's also going to be support, back channel support and stuff that, you know, you can't talk about uh, publicly. That's going to be going on where the U.S. government's going to be helping the Afghan government. That's obviously going to happen. But it's just no longer going to be our military presence holding this whole place together. And people say, well, what about South Korea and what about Germany? Uh, The Taliban isn't about to take over Germany. I mean, there's not an imminent threat of war in these countries. So those are strategic military bases with host partner nations that actually want us, for the most part, in country. And our troops are not at, at any risk in Germany or in or in South Korea or in or in uh, Japan. So that's a very different circumstance, isn't it? If the Nazis were still running around Germany controlling, you know, the whole states, you know, the Nazis were running Bavaria uh, as the Taliban is running parts of Afghanistan, then you'd have a more similar circumstance. 
but it's time to go. And, uh, you know, like I said, I know a lot of people change their stuff. I know there, you know, there are people who as radio hosts were calling Trump an idiot and he's awful. And then there were the big Trump cheerleaders, even they were pretending they weren't. Uh, I thought we should have ended Afghanistan under Trump. And this is the timeline that the Trump administration then sent out. Biden's going to stay with it. I believe this is the right move. And I think it will get ugly. I think there will be cost to this, but it's not. I, I couldn't sit here and say, if, if you made me secretary of defense, I could not sit here and say to you, the American people, including all the people listening to this who are active and former military. We've got people in the spe- uh, special operations community who listen to the show. We have SEALs. We have SF. We have Marines who listen to this show. I could not say to them, yeah, I want you to I want you to stay in Afghanistan. I think this mission is worth it. And I certainly couldn't say to any of their parents, I want to put your your uh, children in harm's way for this mission set. And so if that's how I feel, would I send my own son, if I had one, uh, to secure Helmand province at this point? If I were the Secretary of Defense? No, I would not. So come what may, that's how I feel about this. And I'm not, I'm not going to trash this policy because the Biden administration is following through on it. Our troops, our national security is more important than those kinds of games. <laughs> Hey, Team Buck, thank you so much for watching the first on YouTube. If you like this video, please click that little thumbs up button so then it will log as liked. And also, if you want to see more great content from the first, please click subscribe.